Hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, you guys, we are going to learn about vintage clothing today. And I have special guest Clara with me, and she is going to introduce herself. And then we're going to get into some clothing bolos. Hi, Courtney, and thank you, Bolo Buddies, to have me here. I'm so excited to talk about vintage. Like Courtney say, said, is my name is Clara, and I'm the owner and founder of The Clothing Vault, which is my business that I use to grow my vintage businesses organically on eBay, my website, Etsy, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook pages. And thanks to the Clothing Vault, I was also able to fund my other business myself, Clothe List Perfectly, which is the business I had to create because of many sales that I had at the Clothing Vault. <laughs> because at that time, we were called Least Clothing Courtney. <laughs> that is crazy. I did not know that. And everybody that watches me knows that I talk about List Perfectly all the time. Love it. It has... Um, been one of the best things I've done for my business. So I thank you guys so much for coming up with such an awesome service. So I wanted to kind of incorporate you as a reseller and you are an expert pretty much compared to me, an expert on vintage clothing. So I thought we would share your bolos because that's what we do on my channel. And I'm just going to let you screen share some of your bolo items. How does that sound? Oh, I love it, Courtney. I can't wait to share. This is in my website, the Clothing Vault, and I have also the eBay's account. Still, we have it. We have the Poshmark, Mercari, all over the account. So I can't wait to share this from my website, the Clothing Vault. Awesome. Okay. If you want to go ahead and pull up the first item, I will pop up the screen share. All right. Let's go with the best of the best. We're going to stop. Okay. We're going to start with the best, Courtney, okay? Let's so, see it. This is something that we find on state sales that are on affluent or expensive neighborhoods. And this was a particular, this one, this coat, this Vicuna wow. coat was found in uh, Beverly Hills. And the Vicuna is like an animal that is like kind of like a llama. And that grows on very, very, very limited places of the world, like Argentina, Peru, Bolivia. And it's a, it cannot be, uh, be on captivity because it stresses out and doesn't give you wool. That's why they call these the wow. royal fabric, okay? And it's very, very expensive. And it sold for almost $5,500. Oh, my it's goodness. One of them, the other ones, the highest, so the, the one that the highest price was $8,000 on eBay. Ooh, wow. Now, do you remember what you paid for it? Yes. This one, the one on eBay, we paid $100. And this one in particular, we paid $60. Oh, my goodness. That is definitely amazing. $60. But I want to show. Yeah. Oh and I want to show oh why. Oh. Wow. Look at Look at this. Look at why I paid more than usual because it was dead stock. You see that? And it came with the extra fabric, not oh. a single hole. So this was what made me, okay, pay the extra money. There is no ring around the collar. There is no stains. You see, look at the cuffs. There is no uh, yeah. sign of wear. Pristine. Look at this is when you buy okay um high-end cashmere or you buy vintage uh let's say by kuna make sure that these edges okay are in pristine condition if this is worn out that's going to decrease the value 30 percent of the product you're trying to sell and you said you paid 60 that's right oh my goodness wow right. that is i just can't get over that that yes. is definitely a bolo um, I paid this one. I sold it only for fifty five hundred dollars because if you pay attention, I am I put size forty, okay. Uh -huh. But okay, uh, on the uh, the problem that I have with this one is that it was a short measurement. Okay. It was like in that. That's why we were providing the additional fabric so whoever acquired it could enlarge it. Gotcha. All gotcha. right. Awesome. All okay, right. I'm ready for the next one. Ooh, let's go. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> This is another one of my favorites, okay? Shot. Shot 
uh, Perfecto in this case is a style, but Shot is the brand. Now it's called Shot NYC. Uh, Shot was, oh my God, I can't remember when was it funded and I have the book, okay? But needless to say, okay, very early 1900s, I believe, okay? Wow. It's a brand that is a tradition for bikers uh, and uh, okay. even early police officers. Never heard of that brand. But again, I don't do vintage clothing. So this is going to help so many people that watch the channel because definitely uh -huh. getting educated here. Can yeah. we see the tag? See, absolutely. Can you see it there? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Perfect there. I want to do it like And that sold for $849.95. Wow. And these Please keep in mind that I sold it in my website because if I sell in marketplaces, I double or triple the prices. Um, this is just because I was building my website. Look at that. It's genuine steer height. So you have horse height, steer height. You have so many different kinds of leather. Um, you, uh, when it comes to leather uh, it, that is, was used by Shot Perfecto, because mm -hmm. they use very high quality leather. So if you fall, okay, that, that jacket will protect you. Okay. So you're saying you, you sold it for less than some, if somebody found this, they could sell it for more than that. Is that what you mean? Easily $2,000, especially wow. in the condition that I had it. Let me show you this. Wow. Look at this. Do you see the condition? Yeah, barely, barely, barely used. Look at the cuffs. That's yeah. what vintage is all about condition, okay? And zipper. Make sure this part of the zipper is not damaged. If you have any damage there, if seams are loose here and here, you know that that jacket is going to be a third, worth a third. Condition is everything okay. on vintage. Now, do you remember where you got that or what you paid for yes. that? So that is in the uh, uh, Los Angeles Rose Bowl Flea Market. That is oh, done wow. once a month. Okay, awesome. The key is to arrive at 4 a.m. If you're arriving to Ooh, the flea 4 a.m. Yep, you got to get out of home at 2, okay, wake up at 2, make sure oh. you're out of at 3. Uh, it takes one hour to get from Long Beach to Los Angeles at that time. There is no traffic, okay? LA is horrible traffic. And uh, you got to be there by 4 a.m. And then you have your flashlights and just start, wow. hey, and you just chit-chat, you know, you chit-chat yeah. with the sellers, okay? How do you are remember you? What you? Do you remember yeah. what you paid for it? This one I pay for leather jackets like this on pristine uh -huh. condition. I always pay forty, and if they are in, uh, if they are distressed with uh, worn off patina, I would pay ten. And if the zipper and uh, cuffs were not um, torn or uh, torn or distressed, I would pay twenty. Wow. But wow. I deal in bulk. That was my thing. I don't okay. go to sellers and bother them with their best pick and just try to negotiate on that. I okay. grab a bunch of items, you know, something that is good right. for them and good for me. Yeah. So every time they see me, they have already a little pile for me. A pile for you? Yes. yes. Because That's they awesome. know. Yeah. They know that I, I, I love That's my favorite thing to do is bundle and buy in bulk. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, let me show you one more thing. When it comes to shot uh, jackets, you okay. can see it's a talon zipper. Very important, okay, that you see which zippers, uh, uh, because mostly shot, I can't remember if shot used any other brand on the early editions. I, at the top of my head, honestly, I can't remember. It could be possible. I do have the shot uh, encyclopedia book, but it's very important zippers. That talon zipper, it's crucial when you're buying vintage. Okay. Talon, T-A-L-O-N. Okay. Yep. 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 That's Good right. To know. <laughs> Okay, can I show you the next one? Yeah. Okay. Look at this. Oh my God. This is wow. Amazing. Wait, wait, wait. Let me show you the chevrons. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> so this this jacket is vintage sixty Philadelphia police horse hide. Like I said, horse wow. hide is much better quality. Okay, sometimes and steer high the other leathers. Okay, depending mm -hmm. for what you're using it. In this in this case, it's a size 44, which is between size 44 sizes. Vintage sizes run smaller, so this right. would be like 
equivalent to a regular 40 nowadays, like a medium okay. back in the day would be a large, which is a highly desirable size. Okay. Okay. Size is about everything. And you see how I let it go for cheap in my website. If you have, again, these, I am not a full-time seller anymore. These comparables are from five or four years ago. I want to make sure your audience understands that, okay? And this was a website. I was building it organically without promoting or having sales or advertising. So that allowed me to, because I bought my inventory, I paid for this jacket $25. You see? Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. so now you sold it cheaper yeah. to help grow your website, and then you'll have repeat customers come back because they mm-hmm. got a good deal. That makes and, sense. Yeah. And I helped my wholesaler because I would come and let's say in one purchase I would acquire like two hundred items. Uh, right. The bill was sometimes five thousand dollars, six thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it was a, just a good relationship that you built with people, and yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's so an amazing what, jacket. And your pictures yeah. are amazing. Oh, thank you. Can you believe there was no photo room back then? So I have to. Oh, I'm like, how did she do that? <laughs> uh, well, I have a very good photo studio and I use a G9 professional ca- Canon camera on manual okay. settings. And I taught myself professional wow. photography. It's so, so no. much easier now, right? You just it, it's perfectly, you just use yes. the background remover. That's it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So okay. list perfectly has a background remover. You guys, if you do not know <laughs> about that, it is a great feature. So I want to okay. show something that is important on vintage. Okay. okay. Check always armpits. On this case, Ooh. we have only slight discoloration, but the liner is in pristine condition. So always check liners. When you have a leather jacket and you have with liner, you got the holy grail because that that liner is going to have way much more details. So you see the quality? Right. Yeah. And so a the- lot of times that lining will, if it's really damaged or used, it'll actually rip, right? And tear. That's right. Yeah. That okay. is right. Because it's an acrylic back in the day, uh, they, they, was, they, they used to use poly, which is more like a stretchy fabric. Okay. Acrylic uh-huh. was like more like a firm, it's an artificial man-made fabric that was very not forgiven. And through time, it could cr- crack. Okay. Yeah, I mm-hmm. was going to ask you about the tag, if it actually says horse hide, how you knew it was horse hide. So it oh. tells you right there on the tag. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. amazing. Mm-hmm. And then I show, you see, the whole talk. Yeah, your show. pictures are fantastic. A great example of how you need to show vintage clothing items to Thank really you. show okay. people what they're looking for. Yeah. This is a tip for your audience. Okay. Bolo buddies. Okay. If you <laughs> team, up. don't, maybe you don't need to describe this to the T, but let them know whether it's with a coin, with it. I use a red tape so they couldn't tell that I didn't show them, okay? So you can see this is no damage. For a vintage jacket, you can't say this is damage. Now, if it is a modern Prada jacket, right, that you worn twice, yes, right. that's damage. But for vintage, we call this distressed, normal okay. signs of wear. That's how you want to sell that, okay? Okay. Yeah, for the age, that's looks great. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. Don't undersell it. In the buttons, in this case, I don't know why I'm not, I'm not able to show the button. Oh gosh, you know, this, I, like, like I said, you know, this is our old website, you know, we yeah. built it like eight years ago. Uh, these comparables, this one is from four years ago. So I, w- I wish I could show you the buttons. Buttons are everything. I'm going to show this one and let's see if I can maximize it. Okay, there, there we go. Okay, so buttons are everything on these jackets, okay? If you have un- unequal buttons, don't get it. That's, that means it's been altered, it's been repaired, and that destroys the value of the jacket unless you're willing to let it go for $100. So if somebody paid $25 for it and it had some damage and they wanted to flip it for $100 to $150, that would still be a good buy, but they're not going to get the return that you got. Exactly, gotcha. exactly. Okay. Because I sell damaged stuff all the time because I feel like there's collectors out there that still want the item. They'll try to repair it, but don't overpay for it if it has that damage because they may not make as much as you're making because yours is in mint condition pretty much. Right. Exactly. So when it comes to vintage clothing, even the vintage clothing with flaws, okay, Mm -hmm. forget about the flaw. 
and focus about the style, the brand, and how desired it could be. Why? Because vintage clothing is the prime um, item that people that do up cycle use for their designs. Okay. Gotcha. So, okay. So, so don't forget, your audience is not going to be just someone that wants to wear it. Your audience okay. is also an artist that is going to design, okay, from that vintage, is going to pair it with another garment and upcycle mm -hmm. that garment. Okay. So don't okay. forget you're appealing to many audiences with vintage. Okay, great tip. Great tip. <laughs> Thank this you. is stuff I know nothing about, so I love this. <laughs> Can I move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Amanda. Okay, Amanda helped me on this one because she's a historian. So this okay. is when it comes to talk, you know, um, this is we call the Marlon Brando uh, biker style, the wild one. Um, you know, the style is called the Marlon Brando because of the stars that we have here on the okay. uh, on the shoulders, on the epaulets. And then we have this D pocket, the little zippo or lighter pocket here with this classic style that you can lift the collar and then the belt. Wow. And then we need also yeah. the sleeves to have those zippers. So now I'm gonna go on detail. So again, very important when you buy vintage, if you have that tag barely hanging in there, that is, I would say, if you don't have the right style, if you have the style, don't worry, buy it again. <laughs> buy it, okay. okay? Yeah. But if you don't have the style, it's a classic, let's say, biker jacket, you know, with the uh, mock collar, you know, and the two stripes here, you know, and, and you don't have a, a, a leather or brand, you know, that's going to be, unless you're very sure that it's a beautiful style, it's going to be a hard sell. Has to be okay. an incredible zipper and stuff like that. So okay. here we can see how shoulders, usually on vintage shoulders, will become so grainy. They lead at the undo in your hands. So always check shoulders when you buy it. And armpits, okay. again, you touch it, okay? Yeah. You, know, you want to yank it a little. Make sure that seams are there, okay? Very crucial. And then here we can appreciate the zipper. Oops, sorry. The zipper, all right? I can tell right off the bat, okay, that this zipper, okay, I would question that this zipper is original. I would think that this was repaired in the 60s, okay. okay? Could be original because of the seams. I don't see additional. Could Do you see that? It's very faint. So it's ideal that you see, was the zipper replaced or not? Because connoisseurs of vintage, they will understand that right away. Okay. okay, we have here, do you see how I'm showing the flaws of the liner? And look at, look, I'm showing the uh, collar that has a little dry rot, I believe you call it in English. Okay. Okay, again, oh, here is the zipper. So because of the seams, okay, I think this could be an original one. Okay. Okay. But that, that's how I literally analyze every garment. Okay. Yeah. So you really have to educate yourself on what it yep. should be because I yep. would look at that and just be like, I have no idea. And that yep. one sold for how much? This one sold. Hold on. I wanted to show these zippers also okay. crucial that you see these zippers on the cuffs. Okay. okay. Crucial that you also review. And then the, these ones usually have like a little pull, a chain, pull chain. So everything okay. is matching to the era. But okay. again, I'm always verifying, you know, how, if it is original, this one sold in our website for $600. Okay. Now, okay. again, you could sell this easily for $2,000. Wow. It's a small size, yeah. highly mm -hmm. wanted with uh, younger <laughs> generations, okay, that they're yeah. craving this vintage original. Yeah, vintage um, is pretty hot, right? <laughs> I know, I know. You gotta understand we were the old, the few ones selling this kind of look at my condition. Pre-owned this dress condition, heavy uh -huh. signs of uh, unfortunately they, my employee put wash it, but it should have been this is a template, okay, that we use. Oopsie. Yeah. <laughs> heavy signs of wear, particularly around the interior color liner area, as seen in photos. Perfectly worn for that authentic renegade look. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's still run smooth. Authentic yep. vintage condition. Yep. So great keywords and all of that stuff. That's fantastic. Uh -huh. 
Mm -hmm. quilted liner, uh, shoulder stroppy pullets with start studs, uh, attached belted waist, um, see snap down point, sleep, uh, vintage Esco off center, zip front, details, yeah. all the details that we would yeah. put. I think and people that sell vintage clothing are very detailed. You know, I'm like, more of the, I just want to take a picture and say, see photos. So I would probably be not great at vintage clothing. And I do find it from time to time, but I just never know what style it is, how to describe it. Um, so would you recommend no. just searching like solds and just reading keywords? And is that how you learn? Exactly. Okay. So I want you to search sold, not for pricing, please. We'll talk about pricing, okay? okay. Um, not for pricing. Pricing, if you're looking at comps in the past to set pricings, you're losing money. We're in recession right now. The supply chain is broken, broken as yeah. really broken, okay? So all, uh, this the pricing should be set for what is available, not what sold in the past, okay? okay? So that's my highest recommendation. And with vintage, that I would say, if you find comps in the past, 5X or 10X more. Otherwise, you let it go to another seller. Just know, just know that you're selling to another yeah. seller. You want to sell to an end user, consumer, this is the type of listing you got to do. Tell a little the story. Okay. If you're going to do a quick listing, so then you're selling, to other sellers or mm -hmm. someone that is just very savvy trying to get a deal, but you're not building a relationship for that customer to come back and buy something else unless you have another great screaming deal like that. Gotcha. Okay. And we always set hours. And the reason is if you look at in the old days, we were the only ones on eBay. If you would look at eBay, we always were the most highest in pricing on eBay okay. in okay. everything we did. Yeah, price so, high. So, yeah, we measure it. So, a listing telling a story takes us like this, okay, with details and photos and everything. Uh, I would say, and this is because you know, you have one of a kind, a right one of a kind. You are really research pricing and the story. And when I say pricing, it's not what's sold, it's what, I, what is available, right? Okay. Who else has it? Okay. Mm -hmm. How unique is my item? And then uh, measurements, uh, images, uh, is, uh, put it on the inventory uh, rack and then store it um, because it's leather. I have to protect it. In, if you're in a dry weather like Arizona, you have to really protect it okay. on a special uh, climate control. I would say it would take me between 10 to 15 minutes okay with everything yeah. okay and that's going to all channels okay yeah yep mm -hmm. so okay so can i go to the next uh yes all right let's do this okay check this out Courtney. Oh, my goodness up, all the buddies. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see a racing suit um i want you to touch the fabric if you feel that feels like a t-shirt, unless it's very vintage, very vintage, and you're going to be able to tell by the zipper that it's going to look like a teardrop, okay? okay? Don't get it. Don't get it, okay? okay. In this case, Nomex is, I can't remember when Nomex started to get, I think it was in the 60s uh, that Nomex started to be, or maybe a little earlier, on racing suits, okay? So what you want to do is make sure... Are you getting a real vintage racing suit, okay, that is cotton and you should get it just because at that time there was no Nomex? Or are you okay. getting a vintage suit that is with um, uh, with uh, with Nomex and at the same time has some patches? Because literally, um, if you're going to try to sell a racing suit without patches for 500 or 550, uh, 450 like I did, it's going to be hard. It's going to be okay. really hard. So okay. patches, you can see right off the bat, okay, very important that we provide, okay, a cop, a, we show them, okay, the uh, label. Simpson okay. is a very well-known brand, okay, when it comes to these vintage racing suits, okay. And then just provide them a picture that is not, you know, stained. Do you see it's in very, right. very excellent condition. I'm showing that might have, look at, it has like little time. Do you see how detailed right. I am with vintage? Yeah. I will not get a return because I didn't mention something. Right. All right. I'm showing calves here. Okay. There is the brand. Okay. Again, showing that it's original. 
you're going to find many people that they did their own homemade <laughs> vintage clothing sometimes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you verify all those details. And then we, again, Nomex is a form of nylon that is flame retardant developed. Uh, there it is. Developed in the early sixties. Okay. I love it. On this <laughs> sentence. You answered your question. I answered my own question. <laughs> Look at that. So here we have the measurements. Very good. I put just in case moderate signs of wear just to protect myself, um, you know, pin size discolorations and then one pin head hole, one piece size hole fray. So you see, we always zipper run smooth. Very important that you always describe how the zipper works when you're selling vintage. Okay. Oh, do okay. you see the teardrop? Okay, there it is. Yeah. Talon, talon teardrop zipper. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Got it. Awesome. All right. Okay. And I'm going to show just one more, you know, showing just one more picture, just in case all, all possible angles. So the next one is, this is one. Oh, oh, what a deal I got this one. Okay. Let me tell you the story of this one. We're with Amanda okay. at the Rose Bowl Flea uh, Market. That is once a, once a month in LA, right? Pasadena, okay. Pasadena, Los Angeles. So we arrive obviously like three in the, by literally by, by 10 AM, you are there physically but mentally it's like you're checking out slowly yeah. right? you're done. <laughs> you're like, all you can think is food and coffee yeah so we're about to get out and i'm like i i, I saw just the three stripes the three stripes the green white and red yeah that's yeah. all i saw inside of a box that's how it is on the rose bowl they put it on top of tarps or boxes oh my goodness and i see that and i was like oh italian you know i love you know hey you know i have there is some Italian in my family, you know, what is it? And I go and I yank it and I find, wow. and I find this, um, Courtney. Wow. Can you freaking do? Wow. Okay. And then I see the made in Taiwan Republic, you know, you know, oh my God, I couldn't believe this is the real yeah. deal. Hold on. At that time, I didn't know this. Uh. Wait, it gets better. Okay. It gets better. So at that time, I didn't know this. So we had, I realized that this was a Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> and look at the condition. Mint. Wow. And this, I, I found two. One I sold on eBay for a thousand dollars. And the oh other one I sold goodness. here for 450 on my website. Wow. Uh -huh. wow. That's this, fantastic. Oh, and the flock print on this Adidas trefoil. You can feel it, the felt with your fingers. Oh, yeah. Incredible. A hundred percent authentic. I was so, so happy with this one. I just did a featured members video and one of the members sold a vintage champion sweatshirt. Champion. Just a, I, I can't remember if it, I think it was like a college maybe a sweatshirt and he sold it for over $400 and it was just at an estate sale in a closet. That's right. That's yeah. right. No, yep. it's highly what champion right now is highly yeah. one of the young generations, uh, especially champion. I've seen an explosion on Poshmark and Depop, an explosion of the because that's yeah. a different, different audience than let's say eBay or Etsy. Yeah, and that was Cha Ching King. Since I mentioned it, I do want to shout out his channel. I like to shout out channels. So um he did he does some vintage clothing uh -huh. and he had two of those champion sweatshirts and they both did really well. So oh, I'm so yeah, going to take it. Cha Ching King. Okay. Cha Ching King. So definitely check him out. <laughs> He's great. He's super, super great guy. So yeah, his name's Scott. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. I'll check it out. <laughs> I already wrote it. All, all right. right. The, next, the, next, the next We all like Cha Ching. It should be easy to remember, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, this is something that is incredible. Okay, yes, uh, dead heads. Okay, <laughs> grateful yes, dead. Grateful man. dead. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what makes so special um, is not the tag on this case, Courtney. Okay, this is just okay. a traditional fruit of the loom. Okay, okay. usually you want to have it. There is another brand that you want to see with uh, when it comes to grateful dead, but in this case, what made it so special is the copyright. Okay, that we have, okay. and it says U.S. Ski Team. Wow. Yeah, that's that a great made it so print. special. Yep, and look at. Let me show wow. you. This is very important. So when you buy vintage T-shirts, okay. be 
careful. If you don't have these copyrights and this licensing, okay. uh, marketplace could take away your listings. It's not about okay. anybody can do a replica of a T-shirt right now with a laser print. Right. You must right. have this original print. And the ones that we know, we know. And buyers, no. Okay. Right. Okay. So when in doubt, my biggest advice is get it. But if you're going to get it for a good deal, if the right. seller right. is asking for high price, don't get it. It's not worth it. The okay. risk. All okay. right. So that's very important when it comes to this vintage t-shirt. Oh, let me show you the back. Check this out. Check yeah, this that out. Is, that's pretty awesome. Look at the time. 218. Okay. Winter tour, 94, 95. Isn't that incredible? Look at that. And look at the, yeah, and the, the color and the graphics still look great. It's in, incredible. Yeah. This one is incredible. All right. Next one. A classic. This is the one that you asked me. You yes. asked, can I deliver, Courtney, yes. for you and Polo Buddies? <laughs> Ralph Lauren. Yep. This is important. I'm going to show you why. Oh, unfortunately, do I have only just one picture? Oh, why? What if pity? I'm going to see if I can do. Okay. I'm going to see. I'm going to, well, I'm going to describe it, unfortunately. So okay. uh, this is a vintage 90s Southwestern sweater, Ralph Lauren. And the tag, it's the Polo Country Green Tag. Made okay. in USA. Yep. Made in USA. So okay. that, what you know, is an authentic. Sometimes in the 90s could be done in, uh, I think it was Korea or Vietnam. Okay, sometimes, but okay. uh, Polo Country, this is the um, the label. Make, let me see if I can show very little there. Barely, we can see it up here. Okay, Polo Country, green up there. Okay. okay, so you see the buttons, the leather buttons are still perfectly attached. The show collar is perfect. There is no ring around the collar. Okay. Yeah, it looks it's, like it's in mint condition. It looks amazing. Thank you so much. Um, see, again, a, a small introduction. Like I said, you know, if you're going to try to sell it for now, I these ones are being, you got to understand, we sold a lot of this to Polo, okay? <laughs> in Polo okay. in New York. So okay. now they're being remade, okay? okay? So it's all about sizes now. And if okay. Polo is making this particular size, but it's very big. If you go now to the Polo stores, you're going to find that they have a lot of Southwestern Navajo, they call it, the, okay. the line of uh, but They need sweaters. to make sure it's vintage. Exactly. And not be fooled by something that is current. Exactly. Something that is not being redone. Because then yeah. you're going to have a hard time selling it for a, again, right. See what is available. You want to sell Polo Vintage? Go and see right now what they have on their vintage collection. And okay. go and see on the outlets. Very important, okay? Because here you are maybe dealing with a reseller of a vintage trying to, to charge you $50, but then you can find it on the outlets here in Arizona, okay? I have Anthem Outlets. It's really close to my house. Literally, I'm like, 15 minutes from the outlets, and it's, I find oh, insane Polo Ralph Lauren, wow. like Navajo down jackets for $100. And, you know, you sell them for like 600 or something like that, you know. Okay. So um, these are the puffy downs and XL yeah. sizes, so right. XXL, that are yeah. very hard sizes to get online. However, in outlets, it's very easy. Uh, when it comes to describing the condition here, I said normal wear. No stains, seams are still tight and ready to wear. Only three pin size pulls on front and one on back. So when I say a pull, you know, it's something that literally, you know, we, we don't dare to, to fix it, but it's not, okay. not something that is going to create a hole. So we leave right. it up to the person that acquires. But okay. still, it was not in mint condition. This could be an exception today. If you find this, make sure it's in a great condition it's, and it has the tag attached and it doesn't have okay. a new style recreated by Polo. Okay. Yeah, I know uh, that Ralph Lauren Polo items have a really loyal following. <laughs> And a lot of people will auction them on eBay, like the old hats. And I know the ski print and the bear print are two things to really look for with Ralph Lauren. But that's just from researching, not from me selling those items. I haven't been lucky enough to find them. But I do know that just from doing my channel and my Facebook group. So 
you got it right. You got it. And can you believe that's how I met Amanda? I'll tell you the story. Okay. okay. Very soon. Okay. Thanks to Polo Downhill Skier Best. Okay. Oh, I'll really? tell you. Okay. Yes, I have it down. There it is. There this it is. is <laughs> you asked for it and I deliver. Yeah. This is the famous Polo Ralph wow. Lauren Downhill or Suicide Skier Cookie Stadium Patch. And I'll show wow. you what that is. Okay. Almost so six hundred dollars <laughs> in my website. Okay. Yeah. So it would because definitely probably go for more than that on eBay. On eBay, I sold it yeah. for two thousand. Wow. I found many of these ones. Wow. Many, 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 many. And uh, I wish I had comps from eBay, but you know how it is. You know, a terrific yeah. only yeah. one year, and then eBay only ninety. So. Yeah. When I met Amanda 13 years ago, I met her socially because she came with her laptop to one of my barbecues and she okay. asked me 13 years ago for my Wi-Fi password. Uh. Ago, and I was a banker at that time. You can imagine. I'm like, uh, okay, mm, okay, I'll do it. And I, I, when I asked my friends, is she reliable? You know, can we trust her? So said and done, I give her my password and then I see she goes to a corner of my house. We're all eating, you know, barbecue, cheering, and she's just smiling by herself on the corner of the house. Keep in mind, there was no smartphones back, back then. Yeah. And I go, of course, I'm like, okay, I gave you my Wi-Fi, you know, password. You're going to tell me like, what, what you're smiling at. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, and yeah. I went to her like, hey, here's some barbecue, you know, hey. What, what are you so happy about? And I'm like, oh, can I tell you about it? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, I'm an eBay seller. And uh, look at what I just sold. And all I can see is a vest with a downhill skier, but a yeah. hole in the chest. It had a hole in the chest. All I could see is the hole, Courtney, okay? Yeah. And uh, imagine, so if you please here in the chest, here, right there, yeah. a hole, okay? And I'm like, and it's still sold. Are you freaking, and I look at the price, $200. And, and I looked at, hey, aren't you going to get in trouble for doing that? And, yeah. and, and she said, no, 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 Clara, uh, look at this. You know, she shows me, look, 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 I'm going to go to description, see moderate signs of wear, let's say, you know, hole on yeah. the chest, uh, fist size, uh, I'll never forget, fist size hole on chest as shown on pictures. Oh, my goodness. Two weeks later, she gets a five star uh, <laughs> five stars uh, review, okay, in a picture the person saying, thank you so much. This is the best that I used to engage to my wife. And today Aww. we are renewing our vows. And Aww. he sent a picture. That's, That's awesome. Do you see what is to describe the story of vintage? It's an emotional sale Attachment. all the time. So in this case, okay, we have a, uh, oh, this is important. There it is. Made in Hong Kong. Okay, let me see. Singapore. Okay. Singapore or Hong Kong. Okay. The 90s, you want to see Singapore or Hong Kong. And then do you see, you know, how it is 80% down and 20% yep. water pole yep. feather in the, the tags are perfect. Okay. You want to make sure, you know, the horse is not too big or the horse is not on the side. Okay. okay. Um, you know, there is, I've seen knockoffs of vintage or okay. handmade. Very important. The embroidery. Okay. To be in great condition in this case. Do you see it's in yep, the spell there. out on the side? Exactly. That Polo USA, this jacket without the Polo USA and the cookie on the front and just the embroidery, I would say, look, it has it. I can see the piece size hole right there. Okay. It okay. has a piece size hole right there. I can see it. Okay. That one right now, okay, would be, I would say, just a down here skier in, in eBay. I would say, 700 i think i haven't checked comparables please okay okay i would say yeah. 700 that's why i would let it go in this condition okay I, keep in mind i always sold for high value i waited my six months for the right person to sell it gotcha okay let's see what makes this jacket so and do you see the snaps you better check those snaps and make okay. sure they're original to ralph lauren the zipper ykk or talon okay very okay. important that cookie patch this is called a cookie patch anything that you find back in the day this was very unique unfortunately now this is being redone all over with ralph lauren mm -hmm. it's not so original okay okay but what makes it original is the cookie patch with that downhill skier okay now awesome. let's see the condition of the sleeves. Now look at this condition. Nowadays, you it's this distress condition. It's highly wanted by younger generations. 
back in the day when I sold this, this was okay. not wanted. People wanted better conditions. Do you see there the piece I sold? Right. Okay. And the things. So very important. You show you so show details. In today's, um, people are less concerned about condition. The younger generations that are buying it, they're not as concerned. Exactly. Uh, the younger generations, they don't mind phrase or okay. distress. Uh, look. Distressed. Okay. Uh -huh. Back in the day, anybody on eBay would say, oh, it has a flow. I'll give you $10. Okay. Okay. <laughs> everybody so the remembers. The collectors want things that are, you know, just to showcase it. Yeah. Okay. Versus younger generation that wants to use it. They for just want to cool. wear it. <laughs> yep. For a cool style, you know. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. The next one we have. Okay, I wanted to do real quick. Okay, here is my top selling categories for women's clothing. Okay. We've done everything. We sold even cars on the clothing vault. Okay. Oh wow. <laughs> but, okay, in this case, I'm gonna stick to what made the clothing vault famous. Okay, and I'm gonna share this first comparable that I want to share with you: the beaded wow. 70s dresses. I cannot emphasize. Okay. If you can see all those, this that one is, is beautiful, isn't it? You wow. see, there is no discoloration. This is a rayon liner. Rayon, rayon liners get this uh, uh, this color with time. This right. was okay. perfectly kept on a trunk. I'm surprised that didn't sell for more. That is all. It's full bead, right? Yep. Wow. Yep. 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 Wow. We didn't do much women's, you know, we didn't, okay. you know, it's something, you know, that we didn't put much effort. We didn't know how to describe it. As you can see, okay. you know, we don't know how to describe it. You see, you see how glamorous, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's with, detailed. <laughs> made hey, in India, cool. which is very, very highly desired, wow. desired silk, Rayon and made in India, absolutely. Now this would have no prawns being sold nowadays for a thousand dollars. It's beautiful. Obviously, I sold it to another reseller. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. The next comparable is oh my goodness. So I want That's to just awesome. look, at this. look at the hood. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Look at this. Amazing. It's so unique. Wow. Now look at the union. Yep, okay. Union made. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, Very yeah. important. I now have heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, look at that. Look at the hood, how I'm showing. Wow. Look, I'm showing the zipper. All right. It's amazing. I'm showing the back. So beautiful. It's acrylic, I believe. Okay, let's go to the here. Okay, so let's see. Ta -da -ta -da -ta -da. Pile fabric method. It doesn't show, but it's mostly acrylic, okay? okay. And as always, show the zipper. In vintage, okay. you must show that zipper. Do not polish zippers. Buyers do not want you to polish zippers. Okay. Do not alter. Do you see high quality zipper? Not like well, that. Mm -hmm. okay. Very important when it comes to vintage, two hundred and fifty dollars, okay. wow. never worn. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Measurement, that's awesome. love that. Nineteen fifty-five wow. USA ladies' garment, workers' union made tag. Awesome, that's All fantastic. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Next one, another of my favorites. I always did very good on vintage with capes. Uh, okay. In this case, uh, this is a military issue, okay, uh, because these are military nurses, okay, okay. for the uh, vintage 40s Navy wool nurse cape, um, you know, and this is from the brand... Let's see. Standardized by Standard Apparel Company from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, that's close to me. Uh -huh. Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> so check out the introduction. In World War II, nurses wow. near the battlefield would be a soldier saving grace, and they would be wearing one of these very same capes. This wool nurse's cape comes with embroidery reading SMH, which is usually their okay. hospital. Okay, let me go here. Okay, this is what is very... Okay. Look at do you yeah. see that embroidery? Yeah. That's what makes this jacket. That's amazing. Uh, I think it's called the brocade embroidery, which is much highly wanted okay. than the standard embroidery. Now look at those buttons. Amazing. 
Yes, that is awesome. The problem when you find these capes nowadays is that it doesn't have these straps or is missing a couple of buttons. Okay. All okay. right. That makes sense. Does that it, is that so you can unfasten it from either side? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So I'm showing the little flaws that it has. Okay. Yep. I'm doing a close up of the button. There is a little scratch on the button right there. Yeah. Very important to show that. Okay. And that those are details that I love to show. Okay. And I that's why people search for vintage buttons on yes. eBay because they want oh. to replace them on vintage clothing. Money maker, money right. maker, bolo buddies, go get those vintage buttons. <laughs> if they are metal, please, or 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 uh, leather, uh, metal, bronze, leather vintage buttons even the cross ones okay the knot button is called the knot leather okay. button get them highly okay. what especially the big ones go dive okay. in and get it incredible how fast they sell especially okay. on Etsy. um in my condition i describe okay only slight signs of actual wear one pin head and one piece size holes on the left front side of the interior liner the okay. buttons are firm and the embroidery is in great shape so, okay. I just so it's sure. very very important to put in that detailed information for the condition when selling vintage items and include photos exactly avoid returns you don't want to do this extra work remember you're going to be selling to other sellers and they might want a freebie and they will win uh, the case would be that they could right. win you know, because it wasn't yeah. described. It's vintage. -ish. It's a very picky category to sell in. All okay. right. <laughs> Next is anything that is like, I cannot say enough, like flamboyant, like over the top. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And you see it with, and it doesn't have to be a brand, uh, Courtney. Look at okay. this. Hawk Run 2. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Made in Taiwan. All right. It's not a brand. It's not a, it's not a brand, but look at how yeah. much it sold for. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. fancy and it's different and it's unique and somebody's looking for it. Look at it came with the buttons. Yeah. You see, it has wow. still the original buttons. Always, I always show, even if it is new, the cuffs. Okay. So I have a question. Yes. Um, I use NOS, new old stock, for items that are vintage hard goods. Is dead stock basically mean that it's never been worn? It's what can you Thanks. explain the term dead stock to me? Thank you so much. So we have dead stock, okay, or new all stock okay. is the same thing. What does it mean? Okay. It's an item that is no longer being manufactured and it's okay. more than 20 years old and okay. it has still, okay, the original. Uh, manufacturer or retailer tags. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. And, Thank you. Yep. So it's a highly wanted condition among vintage collectors. When you have something that is this, if I had it today, I would put it for five hundred dollars in eBay easily. Wow. In wait, awesome. I know I would sell it to Europe. I know how oh, Europeans yeah. love it. They love it. They love it. I've had a lot of international sales lately. I don't know what's going on, but a lot. And I'm talking hard goods, not clothing, vintage clothing. But mm -hmm. just it seems like every day I'm having international sales. So it's pretty cool. I'm happy with it. <laughs> um, my clientele, uh, because mainly my my main platform was eBay, my okay. clientele was always 60% international. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So internationally, a lot of vintage clothing goes internationally. Oh, all day, all day, France, okay. Italy, Germany. Okay, no need to 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 give them uh, lower offers. They'll pay okay. whatever. You increase yeah. the price, they'll still buy it. Trust me. Yeah, I know. Um, snapback hats, vintage snapback hats. I've sold a few of those, and most of those high dollar ones have went internationally. Absolutely, mostly. for me, that's been my experience Absolutely. with those. Mm hmm. The last one that I want to show you, okay, I have more yeah. if you want, but the last one, at least on the woman's category, is people, anything red leather, okay, uh, yeah. like black leather coats for men, red leather coats for women is like yeah. funny to bees, okay? It's this awesome. one, yes, this one, and I have a special story to tell about this one. The person okay. bought it on eBay and tells me, change the address, Clara, and I'm like, okay. no. 
I'm not going to change the address. I'll shift yeah. to the address. You need to speak with eBay at that address. We cancel the sale and then you purchase it again. You know what she does? She goes and buys it on Etsy and she tells me again, you know, send it to a different address. And I go, no, you know, if you want this by this time, I already cancel. Okay. The eBay yeah. sale. All right. Yeah. And I have it on Etsy. In Etsy at that time, it was iffy. You could okay. change the address if not. They say you can do it now. I wouldn't do it. Okay. Yeah. Again, I, I, I don't do it. I just don't do it. Yeah. Okay? Especially on high dollar items. Like if it's a little bread and butter item, it might be okay to take a chance on Etsy, but really with something high dollar, I would definitely not risk it. Yeah. There's yeah. usually something. And why did they want to change the address? You know? Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah. you did the same mistake again on Etsy. Come on. So I canceled yeah. the sale on Etsy and she comes yeah. to my website. Okay. Now on my website, my rules. Okay. Yeah. So what you have to protect yourself on your website is chargebacks. And the way you okay. do that, okay, is by um, only shipping. Okay. Uh, I only allow her to do PayPal. I, I already, right. I, I could right. tell her yeah. pattern. So I only yeah. allow her to pay with PayPal. So in right. that case, I was protected by PayPal and it was done by my website. And of course she tried to do like a, a, a what is it? Item not as described. And I, I was like, okay, send the item back. Yeah, and exactly. It happened. Nothing happens. Right. So vintage 80s, red leather trench coat. Now, let me show you the brand. Look at this brand, Courtney. So, have you ever heard of it? I No. <laughs> I haven't no, heard of it either. Me either. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I'm, like, no, I'm embarrassed. You're like, no, it's not a good brand. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so me either. Okay. So the good news is that it's a generic brand but what is important with red leather uh look at this umbrella uh we call it the umbrella uh what is it called back um amazing style um look at this okay look at that style it's belted it's included the belt has epaulets look at the details yeah. on the on the has like a little straps with buttons on the cuffs and this color wow this color it's incredible. Now, yeah. also, again, it's long. It's yeah. Now, 1314. Um, is that more of a vintage size or is that because like when I think of a size 13, the odd numbers, I think of juniors. Exactly. So vintage always ran smaller. I was new at this at that at that time when I did this listing. This okay. was like six years ago when I started to resell multi-platform. And here's what you can see. My mistake, I could have said, hey, vintage sizes run smaller. Uh, okay. This is equivalent, I could have said, this is equivalent to a small modern size. That's what, I, if you look at my latest listings in LP about vintage, that's what I started to do and really help people. Otherwise, I would be like, no, go by the measurements. And look at the chest is 40, Courtney. That's that's, you know, medium, you know, but right. then look at the tiny waist, you know, 38, you yeah. know, it's a tiny waist. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, that's what, it, what it's most about, you know, sharing or, 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 or showing about vintage. Okay. Let me show you this one. So can you see my website, the clothing vault? I see it. Yep. Okay, so this is the landing page, and this is what I want to show with everybody. When uh, we did uh, our own website, we wanted to prove that you can have an ugly website and have beautiful yes. things and still make half a million dollars. So this is what I did. Okay, this is our vintage. This is all of our, all of our listings. You can see shirts here. Okay. You can see jackets from satin jackets, sport jackets, college jackets, uh, police, uh, motorcycle jackets. Now, let me show you this. You can you have even military jackets. I have by brands, Levi Strauss. I have vintage T-shirt. Wow. All right. Dead stock, the category that you like. OK. Yes. yes. OK. Vintage leather. Everything's everywhere. All these are my pictures. And look at what I did here. This is my picture of my laptop. Okay, sending oh, wow. my traffic to eBay and sending my traffic to Etsy. I'm not stealing okay. traffic from them. Right. I'm gotcha. sending them traffic. I'm saying right. because I didn't do okay. Uh, I didn't do search engine optimization for my website. I didn't do. I rely on the organic content of my listings. Okay. And I proved it. I okay. proved it. You yeah. know, it's 
possible. And that after we have the clothing ball website, eBay store, Etsy okay. store, the clothing, we have yeah. the clothing ball, eBay, the clothing ball, Etsy, the clothing ball, Facebook, the clothing ball, Pinterest. I had the problem of inventory management. Okay. So what I wanted was a centralized inventory management in a listing place. I didn't want it to start my listings on a marketplace. I wanted to start it in my own uh, platform. So then I could just send the listings to the different marketplaces and control it right. from my seller half. That's how List Perfectly was born back That's then awesome. called List Clothing or AKA in the beginning, it was called the Mandy Lister. Uh, <laughs> because awesome. yeah, the co-founder of List Perfectly is Amanda. She's the non-technical, the technical partner that taught herself coding um, after being a reseller in the, you know, and in, in, in we needed the solution of List Perfectly. Right. Yeah. List Perfectly. <laughs> 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 I don't use the catalog and I know that I should. And I know there's so many benefits to that. And I should get you back on here sometime and have you show everyone how to utilize the catalog because I start on eBay and then I cross post to the other platforms, which works amazing for me. And that's what's great about List Perfectly is everybody can utilize it how they want. But I would love to have a video showing how the catalog works because I'm missing out on that d-list feature and do you want to tell them some of the things i'm missing out on well you know what courtney i need to develop a solution for you because courtney is she's doing marketplace to marketplace because how do you import ten thousand listings to lp okay yeah, yeah you can do I'm not quite to ten thousand, but i have a lot <laughs> but you because you're selling right yeah so yeah how do you do, even though you can do 250 listings with good internet, let's say right. in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, okay, still we have a big segment of users like Courtney that don't just don't want to import and that's fine. We don't, yeah. What we're going to develop is a massive import. We're going to help you. Courtney soon is coming, okay, okay. where you're going to be able to import all of those 10,000 listings in bulk. Okay, okay. To LP. So then you can have okay your all of your listings in LP and then manage from there. Right now okay. we're limited at your device, internet, and personal settings to set up the maximum amount of listings you can transfer. Uh, for example, if you have rural internet, okay. If you're in, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, if you're in a rural area, okay, with one of those satellites internet. You might be able to do two, three listings importing at a time, you know, maybe okay. 10 minutes. Okay. okay. So okay. everything depends. But I would be honored to come back and talk okay. about the uh, catalog of List Perfectly. But the That's way good. you're using List Perfectly right now, it's perfect. Because yeah, it it's perfect it for me. I love it. But I just want to make sure that my viewers understand that there are other options. So if they want to utilize the catalog, it has so many benefits, like the inventory management side of it and, you know, um, the D list feature. I'm still manually removing mine. So lots of things that I'm missing out on because I don't yep. use the catalog. Oh, Courtney, and soon is coming the automatic uh, removal sold listing. So when you sell on eBay, we automatically or let's say you sold in Mercari, we automatically uh, remove it from all marketplaces. Done. Wow. So that's in the future coming no right now teresa cox is playing with it right now oh wow <laughs> okay. it's so literally it's we're very just, soon yes we're just okay. finishing a couple of bugs okay just because we're going to be adding some additional features as well uh we're very excited okay so you're saying instead of having to hit d list and look it up it's just automatically going to do it this perfectly will do it that's amazing. <laughs> um, and then we're going to release the enterprise version for you. I'll let you know. And I let I let know all the polo bodies that are amazing <laughs> like yourself, okay? As soon as I have that feature. In the meantime, awesome. please keep using LP the best way you can. And uh, yeah. anything I can do for helping um, our community with vintage uh, knowledge. That is awesome. Thank you for coming on and sharing your bolos. I wanted people to see that you are actually a you were a reseller you don't do it much anymore because you've got so much going on with list perfectly but you definitely know your stuff and it just i appreciate and love that you both were resellers first 
and develop this product for resellers because there was a need, you know? So, and it shows your customer service is fantastic. And you guys are constantly upgrading and adding new features, like nothing I've ever seen before. I can't say, I mean, just you're awesome. Awesome. So I appreciate, I appreciate it so much. So thank you for coming on and sharing your bolos and your knowledge with vintage clothing. Again, that is something that I can't give to my viewers because I don't know about it. And so many people are wanting to learn about vintage clothing. So I think this is going to be super helpful. So thank you so much, Courtney, for having me here. Thank you, Bolo Buddies. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And thanks for watching. <laughs>